The iFixit team is in San Francisco for Framework's second gen event. There's an upgrade for the Framework 13 and we've got two brand new products as well. The Framework 12, which is supposedly their most repairable laptop yet, and the Framework Desktop. The Framework 12 is entirely brand new. We're told it's the most repairable product they've made yet, or at least the most repairable laptop they've made yet. We haven't seen much of that yet, but we already know that the battery and the stylus is very repairable. Uh, the Framework desktop is being built on pretty standardized platforms. It's going to be very easy to disassemble, very easy to repair. And Framework has been nice enough to invite us to their office to give us a chance to be the first to tear down the Framework desktop. We're at Framework HQ and we're gonna tear down the Framework desktop. Now, this is gonna be a quick teardown because not only is this a Framework device, but it's also a desktop that adheres to open PC standards. That means everything inside is gonna be pretty much standardized. But, the engineering in here is pretty cool, and I can't wait to share it with you. So there's not much to this. We're gonna go for the thumb screws up top here. Now, Framework did tell us that this is an engineering sample, technically. Uh, apparently, most of this is gonna remain the same. There's some finishing touches they still need to do. Um, so the final product might be a little bit different. We're gonna reserve judgment on score and whatnot until we see the consumer product. This slides back and away. This front panel is also toolless. It's magnetically attached and comes right away. Uh, so one of the really cool things about this panel is that it's fully customizable. So if you want to add your own stylings to it, like this neat little Noctua logo that goes on there, you just clip it on and replace it will. Here's a Bazite one. Pretty cool. If you're a gamer, you know what Bazite is. Promising for the future of gaming. All right, next up, notice we haven't used any tools yet. And the side panel comes away so we can get a good look at the internals. You'll notice from the coloring of this fan, this is a Noctua fan that's inside this thing. Uh, you can use any 120 millimeter fan so long as you have the mounting kit, uh, which is specific to this case. You'll notice on the side that we have the M.2 2280 form factor SSD and there's a power supply at the bottom. And on the reverse side, we have another tool-free entry panel behind which is another M.2 2280 form factor SSD along with the wireless card, which is also very accessible. So with all the panels off, we're going to start digging our way down into the device. Starting with the fan bracket. We've got four Phillips screws here, pretty standard, easy to get to. Now, with the screws out, I'm going to disconnect the fan. There's a nice little access point right up here to make that easy. They put some thought into this. It's framework people, not surprising. And the fan is away. And next up, we're going to try and remove the main board. We can see the heat sink here. We're going to ignore that for the now. Uh, there are two cables coming out of the power supply. There's a Wi-Fi cable I need to disconnect. And we almost forgot about this. The expansion cards at the bottom are also cabled into the main board up here. So let's remove the expansion cards first. My favorite part of every framework device, by the way. And then we'll go ahead and unplug the connectors to the card and that's the power supply disconnected. We're going to go for the main board now and remove that. Okay, there are four screws on the corners of this main board. Very easy to spot, very easy to access. You're going to have to take my word for it because this is kind of a gorilla style teardown. Uh, you're not getting the classic I fix it shots for these. Okay, so we're going to try and remove the main board now with the four screws out. It is free. I can see it wiggle, but I can also see that the I.O. panel at the back seems to be caught behind this shield here, the top cover. And this is an engineering sample, so I'm not going to mess around with it too much. I'm going to go ahead and undo the screws at the top here just to make sure we take this out in one piece and undamaged. Still using Phillips screws, 
I believe the intention is for this device to come apart with a single tool. And so far that is absolutely holding true. Last one, I think. And yeah. Sure enough, the panel is away. So we've got two, two coax cables leading to the wireless card. We want to remove that first. is free. The only things we have left in here are the power supply. There's the antenna where the coax cables lead to and we have the controller boards for the expansion cards that go into the bottom and that's these two these two cables here. All right so let's start removing the cards in true framework fashion we've got lots of modular components here. The wireless card is the first item I'd like to remove. Looks like there's a little thermal pad underneath there, keep it cool. We've got the button cell battery that keeps the system time, the RTC or the CMOS battery, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's the first time I'm actually changing bits. Uh, I'm assuming whatever tool uh, framework releases for this device or ships with this device, it's going to have two bits. These are, appear to be captive screws. And that plate comes away, revealing our battery. It looks like there's a little bit of double-sided tape there. No, it's actually... Yeah, there's a bit of double-sided tape there holding the battery down. Using the T5 bit, I'm going to go ahead and remove the screws on the secondary SSD, which is a pretty cool latch mechanism with thermal pad underneath to keep the drive cool. That's a captive T5 there. I'm going to screw this back in just so it doesn't bounce around. All right, so this is worth a shout out. I thought that this was a replaceable BIOS module, which would be really cool, but I'm told it's an SPI flash module used for debugging. It's only going to be present in the engineering sample, so you're not going to see this in your version of the framework desktop. We're going to go ahead and remove the primary M.2 SSD. I love that spring latch mechanism. Easy peasy. The last thing I think to remove is the heat sink here. We've got Phillips heads, Phillips screws. Now with the thermal block off, we can see the SOC and the thermal paste on top of it. Uh, and you can see on the board, sorted down, are the RAM modules. Now this is done because the performance gains are substantial. Framework spent a lot of time thinking about the trade-offs of using a system like LPCAM. Uh, but the, the performance hit would have been about half of what this system can achieve in its current form. So there you have it, day one teardown of the Framework desktop. This is really cool. It's really exciting to see Framework expand into a new product category and bring their philosophy for repairability and reusability and the push for a circular economy and how it should be done to this device category. Uh, as far as the score goes, we can't score this device because this is an engineering sample. We can only score a device, the same device that you the consumer are going to get. Keep your eyes out, the teardown is done, but that repairability score is coming soon.